Hello everyone and welcome back to Pokemon Fire Red episode 37, I believe? In the last episode, we did some minor stuff that we could do, including getting some new Pokemon and whatnot. And in this episode, we are going to tackle the Viridian City Gym. The gym that we didn't know was even really there when we first started. Uh, we saw it, it was locked, and then we just kind of forgot about it, you know? We didn't really think about it. We just didn't. All right, so we are going to lead with Vaporeon, and I'm going to go through all of these trainer battles as best as I can to show you guys what we can do. So this is Tamer Cole. He's going to have an Arbok. You're going to be fighting a lot of poison types, so having a ground type or anything that's going to be able to shut these guys down. I didn't mean to use Ice Beam, but that's okay. It still took out an Arbok, no problem. We got a lot of experience for that. Now he's going to have a Tauros. We're going to go ahead and switch to Bruce because, obviously, uh, Bruce is amazing. I love Bruce. I love you, Bruce. I love you. All right, so he's going to send out his Tauros, level 39. Uh, these trainers are going to be around level 40. And the highest, the highest, um, I'm going to use Brick Break on Tauros. The highest level Pokemon that you will fight in this entire gym is the gym leader's uh, level 50 Pokemon. So you don't have to, you know, level 50, level 45 is usually a good level to come into this gym with. And we get... 3,000 Poké Dollars for that fight, simply because of how good uh, that Amulet Coin is. So we'll go ahead and fight this guy as well. Uh, this is going to be a... Uh, you're going to be fighting some fighting types in here as well. Now, he only has one Pokémon, which is a Machoke. We'll go ahead and use Surf. Oh, it didn't take him down. I was thinking that Surf would take him down, no problem, and it didn't. So down goes Kayo. We get 2,064 Poké Dollars for winning. Now, there is a much easier way to do this. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, make sure that we fight all of the trainers that we can. Viridian Gym was closed for a long time, but now our leader is back. Who's your leader, though? Cool Trainer Samuel would like to battle. He's going to have a ton of Pokemon. We're just going to go ahead and use Vaporeon. Uh, level 49. Good job, Vaporeon. Go ahead, take down the Sand Slash with a nice big old Surf. Uh, you're going to notice that there are, this, is a, this is a ground type gym. You know what I mean? Uh, this is a poison type Pokemon, so we're just gonna not worry about that. And of course, a Nidoking, which is a poison ground. So obviously, Surf is going to do a lot of damage against that. Now, I would highly recommend bringing a grass type or a uh, water type into this gym. Uh, oh, right, we gotta go all the way around, duh. Because I'm not gonna be able to do that. Which is fine. Uh, the quickest way to actually get to the leader, though, is to go up here. Uh, and then go to this one. And then you'll actually want to talk to him like this, because if you go the other way, he's going to actually come down and shut you out, and you're not going to be able to. You're not going to be able to proceed. So this is going to be Black Belt Takashi. He's going to send out a Machoke. We're going to go ahead and hit him with a Surf. That will hit him, uh, kill him in one hit. He's going to have a Machop as well. Uh, so there are a lot of fighting types, but I think you'll be okay, even with a Water type. There's no Water types that I can think of that are going to be uh, inherently weak to fighting type attacks. So. All right, so we're going to take down these three trainers as well. Uh, this Sand Slash, of course, is going to go down. This Graveler is also easily going to go down to a Surf. And an Onyx. So, as you can tell, anything that deals with rock or ground is going to just sweep through this entire gym. He also has a Marowak, which is interesting. I'm going to hit up with an Ice Beam just to, just to get rid of him as well. And another Fighting-type trainer. Well, he only has two Pokemon. I'm going to hit him with an Ice Beam, get rid of that. And another Machoke. I'm going to hit him with an Ice Beam as well. All right, I wasn't sure how much damage that would do, so... And Poseidon is now level 51. I would love to switch to something else. Um, but I don't think... I don't think that's the... Well, yeah. Let's switch to Bahamut. See, I'm worried about Rock-type attacks hurting Bahamut, but we'll be okay. Pokemon and I, we make wonderful music together. Don't we all, dude? So this is going to be Tamer Jason, who's going to only have one Pokemon, and it's a Rhyhorn, which is, of course, a rock ground type, so fire attacks aren't going to do that well against it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and use Blast Burn just to see how much damage that actually does against a Rhyhorn. Um, okay, good. Even not very effective, it was still able to one-shot that Rhyhorn. Uh, I was just curious to see if that would be something that would actually happen. Now, I do want to lead with my Bahamut, just because we haven't really seen Bahamut in battle. Do you know the identity of our gym leader? You'll need power to keep up with our gym leader. I'm still not worthy. Okay. 
And this is another required battle. Uh, I guess technically it's not a required... No, it would be a required battle. So this is Cool Trainer Warren. He's going to have a Marowak. We're going to take it out with a Flamethrower, it's my hope, yep. Uh, and another Rhyhorn, which we are going to try to use Flamethrower. It did get a burn off, so he will die on that, which is great for us. Another Marowak, who is weak to special, doesn't have a very good special defense. Bahamut hit level 44, is trying to learn Slash. Slash is actually a pretty decent move. Um, it has a high critical hit ratio, and it's a 70 base power attack. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and get rid of Smokescreen, just because I, I don't really use, um, accuracy lowering moves. So we're gonna go ahead and use, uh, Special, because we don't want to actually get hit by that. And a Blast Burn to finish off this Nidoqueen. Yeah, baby! Level 39 Nidoqueen. Lots of experience for Bahamut there. Cool Trainer Warren went down. Now, don't use any special attacks, obviously, against, uh, Nidoqueen or a Nidoking. All right, and now, I don't think there's any items in this gym. There is one. Who's that? Who is that? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute, wait a minute. That looks like a familiar sprite. Foo, ah, 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 welcome to my hideout. It shall be so until I restore Team Rocket to its former glory. But you have found me again, so be it. This time, I'm not holding back. Once more, you shall face Giovanni, the greatest trainer. He's not really the greatest trainer because he's not in the Elite Four. This, of course, is Giovan Giovanni, the leader of the 8th gym in Kanto and the infamous Team Rocket. So he's going to lead with a level 45 Rhyhorn that it has the ability uh, Lightning Rod. This is a ground rock type Pokemon. We've seen it before. It knows the moves Takedown, Scary Face, Rock Blast, which is bad for Bahamut, and Earthquake, which is great for Bahamut. So we're going to go ahead and uh, hit him with a Flamethrower, which should be able to two-hit KO Rhyhorn, uh, is my hope. It doesn't, like I said before, it has a very low special defense, so any of these should be able to take it down. It's going to use Scary Face on us, which is going to lower our speed, uh, I believe, harshly, so two stages. Yep. So that's not good for us. He's going to use a Hyper Potion, because obviously he is the last gem leader in the entire game, guys. This is a big deal here. Uh, so we're going to be able to, I guess, three-shot this Rhyhorn. I don't think he's going to use a Hyper Potion again. Uh, I would be very surprised if he did. Okay, so he didn't. We're still faster than a Rhyhorn, even though we've had our speed lower two stages, which is very fine for us. Now, the next Pokemon that we are going to fight, if I'm not entirely mistaken, is going to be another Rhyhorn. So we're going to stay in, because we know we're faster than it. And this one is actually level 50, so I was wrong. This one is his level 50, uh, knows Lightning Rod as well, and knows the exact same moves, it's just five levels higher. So we're gonna go ahead and use Blast Burn. Um, we're still faster than it, even though it's six levels higher than us, and I'm hoping that this will be able to one-shot it. Unfortunately, it wasn't able to. Uh, so, oh, and his attack missed, so we got lucky there. So we have to recharge. Um, he's gonna use Scary Face again, so now our speed is incredibly low. I was hoping that that Blast Burn was actually going to kill it. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and use Slash, just because we can. And down it goes. Not very effective. Uh, and we should, if I'm not mistaken, get a level off of this. No, very close though. Uh, he's going to switch to Jug Trio. We are actually going to... We're going to stay in, actually. So his Jug Trio is level 42, and it knows the move Sand Veil, or the ability Sand Veil, and its moves is Slash, Sand Tomb, Mud Slap, and Earthquake. If you have a flying type Pokemon, it's not really gonna be able to touch it at all. I'm gonna go ahead, he's gonna use Slash, of course he is, because nothing else is going to work against me. Uh, I'm gonna use a Blast Burn right away, and that should shut down his Jug Trio. One shot, one kill, and we will hit level 45 on Bahamut. Now, this is the great thing about Blast Burn is now, instead of recharging, I can just switch out. No harm done. Uh, we are going to send out our very own Topher against his Nido Queen. King against Queen. Now, I will say that it does have a move that would absolutely destroy us if he uses it. This Nido Queen is level 44, has the ability Poison Point, and its moves is Double Kick, a Fighting Attack, Earthquake, which is a insanely strong ground type attack, Poison Sting, which is nothing, and Body Slam, which is a very strong normal type attack. So we are going to start this off with, of course, using Shadow Ball. Um, Shadow Ball is going to be our thing because it's not... Nidoking's not gonna resist it at all. Now, this Earthquake could potentially kill us. Um, unfortunately, we don't have any ground attacks on this Nidoking, so it does look like if this is a problem. So we do have leftovers, so we will be able to regain some health. And I would rather Topher not die in this fight. Uh, so we are going to go ahead and switch to... We are going to switch to... Um, well... Let's switch back to Bahamut. So now his speed is back to normal. We're going to switch to Bahamut. 
hope that Nidoqueen's going to use Earthquake. Perfect. Doesn't affect us. I was hoping for that, that swap there. Uh, and we are going to use Flamethrower. Even though Nidoqueen does have a very high special defense and does have a very high defense, uh, this is going to be a reasonable damage. Reasonable damage. It's going to hit us with a Body Slam. Let's hope we don't get paralyzed. Perfect. And we are going to just hit it with a Slash as well. Ah, oh, should have, should have anticipated that Hyper Potion. That's okay. We'll still be able to finish it in this next attack. And a Flamethrower will hopefully bring it down. Uh, if we get the high end on this Flamethrower, it will potentially kill Nidoqueen. And we didn't... Oh, we did! It's all good. It's all good. It's going to take damage from this burn after it hits us with a Body Slam. I'm still hoping that we don't get paralyzed, which we didn't. And down goes Nidoqueen, meaning Giovanni, the last gym leader of the entire game, only has one Pokemon left, and it's his Nidoking. Now, he did get rid of his Kangaskhan, which is unfortunate because it's a very good Pokemon. I think it's because of the typing issues. He did have it in the first game, if I remember correctly, in red and blue. This is uh, level 45 Nidoking with the ability Poison Point. It knows Double Kick, Earthquake, Poison Sting, and Thrash. So this thing will do a uh, pretty considerable amount of damage, and it might it's not faster than us. So our level 45 Bahamut using Blast Burn is going to be able to take out Giovanni's level 45 Nidoking in one attack. Now, it actually does have a pretty good move set, except for that Poison Sting. Huh, that was truly intense fight. You have won. As proof, here's the Earth Badge. Ah, uh, yeah, we got the Earth Badge. And we get 5,000 Poké Dollars for winning. We could have gotten 10,000 if I had used uh, Poseidon. The Earth Badge makes Pokémon of any level obey without question. It is evidence of your mastery as a Pokémon trainer. With it, you can challenge the Pokémon League. Also, take this TM. Consider it a gift for your Pokémon League challenge, and we will receive TM26, one of my favorite TMs in the entire game, Earthquake which of course we are teaching to Nidoking. It is a powerful attack that causes a massive tremor. I made it when I ran the gym here far too long ago. Having lost in this fashion, I can't face my followers. I have betrayed their trust. As of today, Team Rocket is finished forever. As for myself, I shall dedicate my life to training again. Let us meet again someday. Farewell. Now, if we stand exactly where he stood and use the item finder, we will get a new item. There's an item buried underfoot, and we will receive a Macho Brace. A Macho Brace is wonderful. Uh, if we go ahead and actually look at this, this is an item that is necessary for EV training. It's just absolutely necessary. An item to be held by a Pokemon, it promotes strong growth, but lowers speed while it is held. What that means is you'll actually get double the amount of EVs from Pokemon that you defeat. So we're not going to be using that because obviously we're not doing any EV training in this game. Um, but it's worth mentioning that it is there. And all of our Pokemon are unfortunately already fully EV trained, even though we didn't do it right. Uh, so let's go ahead right away, go into our TM case, open that up, and we will go ahead and teach and teach Nidoking my favorite TM in the entire game, Earthquake. It is a base 100 uh, power, base 100 accuracy. It, oh, it's so good. It's so good. And to be able to get, finally have a, uh, a Nidoking that knows Earthquake is going to be so good. So good for us. Uh, now, it is worth mentioning that you could, you could of course, teach that to... Um, I'm going to keep Mega Horn, Shadow Ball, and Rock Slide. I'm going to get rid of Double Kick. Because I don't really think it's necessary, having Double Kick. We can take out anything we need for the most part with Earthquake. It's just going to be... It's it's just that strong on a Nidoking. It's just that strong. Alright, so... Uh, we're not going to end the episode here yet. Because I want to make sure that we get to... Um, well, our next destination, I guess. So we now have... Let's go ahead and look at it, because I think, I think it's going to be cool. So we now have all eight badges. That's some pretty cool stuff. 70 hours, don't look at that. Pokedex 97. Uh, we, are, we are definitely getting up there. It's very cool to be able to take down the one and only Giovanni, leader of Team Rocket. Now, as anybody who knows, spoiler alert, Giovanni, Team Rocket comes back. Team Rocket definitely comes back. So we will go ahead and restore our Pokemon. Make sure you have Pokemon that have Surf and whatnot on your team. Now, it's worth mentioning, too, that the guy that's right below us in this tree area, uh, he knows the move Dream, uh, Dream Eater, and he will teach it to one of your Pokemon. So, let's continue this way that we couldn't go before, and look who it is. What? Corey, what a surprise to see you here. So, you're going to the Pokemon League? You collected all the badges, too, huh? That's cool. Then I'll whip you, Corey, as a warm-up for the Pokemon League. Come on! 
So now we get to face Friesen, the one and only Friesen, our rival, who's going to have a full Pokemon team. Pidgeot is going to lead. So with his Pidgeot, we're going to send out our very own Chu, who's going to be able to come out right out of the bat, right out of the gate, right out of the bat, right out of the gate, going to get a static on Pidgeot, who is able to hit us with a with a quick attack. Now it is worth mentioning that uh, Friesen or your rivals' party kind of changes. So the best way to explain how his party changes based on your Pokemon is I'm going to put up a graphic that should be appearing above me right now. So you'll be able to see his team based on who you chose. All right, so we took down Pidgeot with a Thunderbolt, which I knew would happen. Uh, he's going to come out with his Rhyhorn, which he now has. We are going to switch to our very own Topher. The reason for that is because I very, very, very much want to see Topher's Earthquake in action. So we're going to go ahead. He's going to have his level 45 Rhyhorn. We're going to take him down with Earthquake. Earthquake. I'm not going to go over the moves that his Pokemon team has because I don't know if it's totally worth it right now. Unfortunately, Topher was not able to take down Rhyhorn with that one hit, which I kind of thought he would be. But it's okay because Rhyhorn is going to take himself out with the recoil damage. Now he's going to come out with a Alakazam. We're going to stay in with our Nidoking or Topher. Uh, obviously because we have that advantage against um, against Psychic types. And of course our Leftovers is going to kick in and heal a little bit of health. So we're going to go in with Megahorn. And Megahorn should be able to finish Alakazam no problem just because his defenses are so low. And obviously that's a super effective strong physical hit. Down goes Alakazam. We'll get a lot of experience for that, actually. And now he's going to send out Blastoise. Uh, for Blastoise, I am obviously going to send out Chu. Just because... I just... I just... Why not make it easier for ourselves? I know that Chu is a little overpowered right now, but... It's okay. Blastoise level 53, so not that overpowered. We're going to be able to probably take down this Blastoise in about two hits, I would hope. Um, unless he uses some potions. Uh, which I don't know if he will actually do just yet in this version of the game. Uh, in this battle, I should say. So there we go. We were able to take down Blastoise through two Thunderbolts. Easy peasy, Lemon Squeezy. We don't even have to worry about him anymore. And he is his most powerful Pokemon. By a long shot. Next, he's going to send out Growlithe. We are going to actually... Uh, we're going to go out with Luna, to be honest with you, because we haven't seen Luna in battle, and I'm not that afraid of uh, a Growlithe. Now, it does have the ability Intimidate, and that's going to lower Clefairy's attack, which is fine, because obviously our Clefairy is a very, like, stalling-type Pokemon. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and use Strength, which should... Wow, we got a crit. That's beautiful. So we were able to take it out with that crit, and hopefully get a level. Yeah, Luna's level 41. Nice job, Clefable. Nice job. And he's going to come out with an Execute. Of course, we are going to switch to our very own Bahamut, who's going to be able to take this thing down. No problemo. A Grass-type Pokemon. We've seen Execute before in the wild. And I believe he was on the team the last time we actually fought our rival, Friesen. So down goes Execute. Goodbye, buddy. Goodbye. And we will not get a level from that, I don't think. No, we won't. Rival Friesen went down. What? I was just careless. You. And we got 1,908 Poke Dollars for winning. Now, we didn't use Vaporeon. That loosened me up. I'm ready for the Pokemon League. Corey, you need more practice. But hey, you know that. I'm out of here. Smell ya. Peace, Friesen. Peace, Friesen. All right. You know what? Change of my mind. All right. So, I decided that I would go over what his actual team is uh, post so, I apologize if you're, like, playing alongside and you're already doing that. Most of you, I don't think, are playing alongside anymore. So, obviously, his Pidgeot is, has the ability Keen Eye, which means don't lower its lacquer accuracy. It won't work. Has the attacks Wing Attack, Quick Attack, Feather Dance, which is great, and Gust. Uh, it's not really going to hurt. You'll be able to finish him off pretty easily. His Rhyhorn knows the ability Lightning Rod. Not that that totally matters. You're not going to be using Electric Attacks against it anyways. With the attacks Rock Blast, Fury Attack, Takedown, and Horn Drill. Uh, his Execute has the ability Chlorophyll. Not that it matters, because he doesn't have Sunny Day on his team whatsoever. Uh, Execute has the ability Solar Beam, which is powerful, Poison Powder, Sleep Powder, and Stun Spore. All of those things are pretty neg negligible. Obviously, if you have something to take down a Grass Psychic type, you won't have an issue against Execute. His a Pokemon that he could potentially have on his team is Gyarados. If he has Gyarados on his team, that's a water flying type, it has the ability Intimidate, uh, and it knows the moves Rain Dance, Hydro Pump, 
Twister and Lee Leer, not a huge issue. Uh, his Alakazam level 47 has the ability synchronized, so don't use any status affliction moves on it. It knows Psychic, Calm Mind, Disable, and Future Sight. That Calm Mind and Psychic is uh, a really hard combo. And his Charizard, if he has a Charizard, will be level 53, uh, has the ability Blaze, Flamethrower, Slash, Wing Attack, Scary Face. Now, if you chose uh, Charmander, which we did, his Arcanine uh, is, so instead of Gyarados and, and Charizard, he will have Arcanine, or Growlithe and Blastoise. His Growlithe knows Flame Wheel, Takedown, Leer, and Agility, not an issue, also knows Intimidate. His Blastoise will know Rapid Spin, Unless you're using entry hazards, which I doubt, not a big deal. Rain Dance, Water Gun, and Bite. Uh, not a big deal on there. If you chose Squirtle, he will have pretty much, he will have both the Growlithe um, and the Gyarados, but he won't have Execute, and instead he will have Venusaur. Venusaur, Grass Poison type, has the ability Overgrow, level 53, knows the move Sweet Scent, Razor Leaf, Synthesis, and Growth. So, there you go. That's all of his Pokemon teams that we have to worry about. Um... I think you'll be able to be okay. If you've gotten this far in the game, you probably have stuff that deals with the rival. So, we will just continue down here towards, well, Pokemon League front gate. What's what's this? There's no items or anything over here. So, let's enter into here. We were actually here way before. Um, there's no items or anything that you're going to be able to find in this area. Let's go ahead and talk to this guy. Oh, that's the boulder badge. Go right ahead. Okay. Right here, we are on Route 23. And the road to Victory Road and the Indigo Plateau. In the next episode, we will tackle all of that, all of that, and go over the few remaining bios that we have left in this game. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you are enjoying this series. Let me know if you guys had issues with the rival fight. Uh, I know he can be challenging, but I think... I think we've built our team accordingly where we are able to take him down, no problem. Let me know, and, uh, and remember, never give up, never surrender. We're almost done with this game.